Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Gold Star families and Spartans. Uh, it really is for Ellen and I an honor to be with you. And one of the themes tonight is uh, we're here post-COVID and actually able to be here in person. And for me personally, I joined the board 18 months ago, and this is the first time I've had an opportunity to, to be around the other board members and to be around the leadership team, so it's pretty special. You know, I, um, I took off the uniform uh, just about two years ago, and COVID hit about three months after I took off my uniform. And I learned about Zoom uh, very shortly after <laughs> COVID started. In the first, probably first two weeks of these Zoom calls, uh, Ryan and Tom Mannion asked for a Zoom. So I said, okay, I'll do that. And, uh, and, and Tom and Ryan get on, and I remember the first five minutes of that Zoom call. It went along the lines of, Ryan, I, I really am honored that you would ask me to be on the board. Uh, I know, certainly know the foundation. I've been around since the beginning. I admire what you're doing. But, you know, all the advice that I've had from people about transition is to, to not make any commitments these first few months. So I don't want to make any commitments right now. And I've already broken that rule, and so, you know, maybe we could... Well, I don't remember the next 50 minutes of the Zoom. All I remember was the last five minutes when Ryan said, well, that's great. We'll send you the onboard material. It'll be, it'll be FedExed on Tuesday, and the first board meeting is next Tuesday, and we'll have another Zoom. There's 400 people here tonight. Is there anybody here who's ever said no to Ryan Mannion? Please stand up. No, there, there actually isn't. Tom, put your hand down. I know that you never did, ever. <laughs> ever. Um, you know, on a serious note, people have asked me, um, hey, do you miss being in uniform? And most of the time, you know, I'll flippantly say, you know, 42 years, no, I don't miss it. Um, but the one thing that I do miss, and the one thing that I say that I miss is, I miss the sense of purpose in the mission that you have when you're in active duty or in, uni in uniform. And I miss being around a bunch of people who share that commitment and share that sense of purpose. And, uh, and that's what I typically say to people when they say, do you miss it? And although I joined TMF uh, really because Ryan and Tom put me in a headlock and they said I had to do it, um, that's why I joined. That's not actually why I'm actually so happy to be a part of the team here tonight. And I'll, and I'll just share one anecdote with you. I've started doing a number of things, and one week in particular, my wife Helen will remember this, I did a couple of meetings, I did a couple of business engagements, and I came home on Friday, and I said, Ellen, I, I don't want to do this stuff anymore. And she, hey, don't get hasty now, you know, you maybe, maybe want to think about it. I said, no, there's a lot of these things, I just, I just, my heart's not in it. And then on that Sunday night, uh, I spent some time with the Spartan Leadership Program. So I joined them late in the evening, and uh, they had spent, this is a Sunday, they'd spent six or seven hours before I joined them thinking about how they were going to do their community engagement plans and so forth. And I spoke to them for a few minutes, and then I took questions, and we had a little bit of an engagement. And I went downstairs, it's about 8.30 at night on a Sunday night, and I said, Ellen, that's as happy as I have been in months. I just spent two hours with my people. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I now know, you know, when I was on active duty, I knew TMF was really something special. I really do uh, believe in it. But I think that it actually takes, when you take off the uniform, to realize and appreciate what TMF gives to veterans, what TMF gives to Gold Star families and others who are involved with TMF. What it, what it gives us all is an opportunity to continue to do what we are so proud to do, which is be a part of something bigger than ourselves, words that have been used tonight. What it does is allow us to do something that actually matters. You know, you see these young men that were just here a minute ago? That really matters. I mean, huge impact. It really matters. And, uh, and tonight, uh, I have the honor of introducing somebody who really, as much as anyone I could imagine, embodies the values of this organization and certainly the organization that he was a part of, the United States Marine Corps. And, uh, you know, Cal Carpenter, everybody knows his bio is, is in your program. 
Carl Carpenter had an If Not Me Then Who moment in 2010 when one of his fellow Marines was in harm's way and he put himself between a grenade and that Marine. And uh, I had an extraordinary experience in September. Ellen and I were in an event and it was several uh, catastrophically wounded uh, Marines, veterans that were there. And one of them was in a wheelchair and I went over and I started to introduce myself and I talked to him and his mother and I said, I said, what's your name? He said, uh, my name's Nick Euphrazio. That's actually the Marine that Carl Carpenter saved. And I saw him in September. Come to find out, he lives 10 minutes from me right now. And, uh, and Kyle, um, Nick is around. We've heard other stories tonight. Chuck, amazing, amazing story that you shared with us here tonight. So proud of you as well. But you know, beyond that, if not me, then who moment, and beyond the Medal of Honor, uh, which Kyle deserved and, uh, and we're so proud of him for. Uh, it's beyond that, it's the character does matter. So the, the other part of the Travis Mannion Foundation, the character does matter. You know, Kyle, when asked a few years ago, why did you join the Marine Corps? Why did you join the military? He said, you know, when I was in high school, I went on a trip to the Dominican Republic. And I knew when I was, there, when I was uh, participating in that visit that I wanted to be a part, these are his words, I wanted to be a part of something bigger than myself. I wanted to serve, I wanted to make a difference. And, uh, and that's how he found his way to the military and, and I, guess, I guess Kyle, you humored your parents and you interviewed with all of the recruiters from all of the services before you went and did what you were gonna do anyway, which was to join the United States Marine Corps. But, but Kyle today, to give you some indication, you know, he does a lot of things. He's a public speaker, he's an author, uh, and one of the things that uh, struck me tonight in a conversation I had with him, he's, he's part of Washington Speakers Bureau, so he gets paid uh, to give uh, remarks, and, and be honest with you, there's a lot of people that would pay to listen to Kyle Carpenter, and those of you who have never heard him will, will know why in a few minutes. But, uh, but Kyle, when, uh, when Washington Speakers Bureau was bringing him on, he, he, he had one stipulation, he said, hey, listen, I do a lot with organizations that really mean a lot to me, nonprofit organizations, and I just want to make sure that, you know, part of this WSB thing doesn't get in the way of that. I mean, that's the kind of individual that Kyle Carpenter is. And then, and then when you think about what TMF does and character does matter and youth development and so forth, you know, you can go online and see a YouTube video of Kyle Carpenter sitting in a seat surrounded by a bunch of young people talking to them about values, talking to them about service, talking to them about character does matter. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you, when you have a guest of honor uh, like Kyle Carpenter and you have the program that we had here tonight, I think we should all walk away here tonight with two things. One, a tremendous appreciation for Tom, that vision that Janet had that you didn't know would be what we see here tonight. But Ryan and you and the other leadership uh, of the organization have taken it to the organization we have tonight. And I probably could have saved everybody a lot of time by saying, do you know why I'm a part of TMF? Well, just pay attention to the last two hours. That's why I'm a part of TMF. But, but ladies and gentlemen, it gives me uh, great, a great honor to introduce Carl Carpenter, somebody who uh, has had an if not me, then who moment and acted somebody who lives, character does matter, someone who is incredibly humble and, and really does live core values. And before I finish on a little bit lighter note, you know, Kyle's a lot of things. So he's a Marine, he's a Medal of Honor recipient, he's an author, he's a South Carolina Gamecock, he's a lot of things. But on the 6th of November of 2021, Carl became Brittany's husband. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you please join me in welcoming truly an American hero and somebody who epitomizes what we're all about here tonight, Carl Carpenter, United States Marine Corps, Medal of Honor recipient. Carl.
Well, we're off to a great start, not because that was one of the greatest introductions I've ever had, but because for the first time I've never had to not lower the microphone. So <laughs> that's a win. Uh, after uh, hearing all of the incredible speakers tonight, um, I thought, uh, you know, not only do we have CEOs, uh, my fellow uh, Marine and dear friend and mentor for many years and casually, uh, the former uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, but we have uh, incredible people like Chuck and Chris. Uh, I thought maybe I should have put my notes on the prompter. <laughs> um, and speaking of, I gotta, I gotta bust them out. They're, they're pretty extensive. My index card, but uh, you know it drives my mom crazy that I don't uh, write every single word out. But I've learned from my journey uh, that life is about uh, being somewhat prepared, uh, but just as much going with the flow, embracing the journey and ultimately just putting uh, your best uh, foot and the best version of your heart forward. Um, hey, and also, uh, the gentleman of vision. Uh, that was incredible. Um, thank you for that. Thank you for waking everyone up. Uh, <laughs> to our, b before I got up here, um, and uh, you can tell that you are led by uh, a professional and crazy Marine. So, uh, hey, y'all are amazing. And uh, ultimately, hey, thank you for striving to see a bigger purpose and a bigger mission and following through with that. Uh, but I'll get to it. Um, you know, and a, another thing with my notes, some, some moments in life uh, are too powerful for words, to prepare words, and uh, tonight is one of those moments. So all I'll say is uh, to Colonel Mannion, to Ryan, uh, as just uh, a Marine, a wounded warrior, a human being, and an American. Uh, I just hope that with my words tonight and with the rest of uh, my time here on earth, I just hope to make um, families like yours uh, proud and, um, you know, ultimately um, to make those who gave that uh, last full valiant measure of devotion who never made it home uh, proud and to just try to whatever capacity I can uh, to be the voice for them. Uh, as I thought meticulously uh, on what I could share tonight with the time that I had. Um, I decided to uh, break it down into three expedited stories. <laughs> and uh, three stories that have a focal point, which are also words and uh, have been focal points and um, uh, just deep meaning uh, in parts of my journey. Time, perspective, and impact, most fitting for tonight. 
time. My life began when I was born, but my journey of self-discovery and perspective began the moment a hand grenade tore my body and my life apart. As I felt myself bleeding out on top of that roof, I knew that was it. I thought about my family, specifically my mom, and how devastated she was going to be when she got the news. And I said um, a final prayer for forgiveness for anything I had done wrong in my life. And I faded from consciousness in the world uh, for what I thought was the last time. To my very happy and pleasant surprise, uh, it was not. And when I woke up roughly five weeks later and opened the only eye I had left to those bright red Christmas stockings that my mom had hung decorating my hospital room, uh, along with being in a perpetual state of disbelief, just as much as I am this very moment, I realized that time uh, and our lives uh, are so fragile and finite. Uh, in short, but that's also uh, what makes it so beautiful. So with time, I encourage you uh, to uh, be the person you need and should be in life so that when you reach those final moments, you don't panic and wish for more time. You don't need more time. You don't hope for more time uh, because you lived your life accordingly. You lived your life for others. You lived a, if not me, then who type of life. My second topic and idea is perspective. After I finished my three-year recovery at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, uh, at the time, uh, you know, back in the old school days, it was Bethesda National Naval Medical Center. Um, <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, shout out to all the nurses and medical um, professionals, one of which took care of me here tonight. I got done with my recovery and I had debated many, many months on uh, did I want to quote unquote hang the uniform up. I had only served technically a year and a half before getting injured and uh, most of my five year journey through the military was in the hospital. I decided that I had bled and given all I could for my country which I would never trade a second for. Sometimes I wish I could have given more, um, but I'm so thankful to have had the opportunity to have uh, given my best effort and, and bled for this country. Uh, and so that along with uh, the incredible relationships I made before getting injured uh, and during my time in the hospital with uh, the most incredible people and wounded warriors, well, I lied, I'm lowering the mic, <laughs> with the most incredible people and wounded warriors, those that with no limbs as quadruple amputees every day would, with what's left of their arms, push their electric wheelchairs to therapy with smiles on their face, with their newborn children sitting on what's left of their legs, uh, I knew that um, that part of my life would never go anywhere. And so I decided to get out um, and to, to go to school. Something, um, Sir General Dunford, um, he put all the spotlight on me, but it's because of 
great people and mentors and Marines like him, who was one of the few people, uh, and I'll never forget this, but he's one of the few people uh, for years and years, as I felt like, and sometimes it really was, the entire country and all these different groups and people were pulling at me. His first question was always, how's school? Are you staying in school? Are you staying true to yourself? So he always helped keep me on the path. Um, but I got out and after a three year recovery, I drove out of the gate of Walter Reed and I moved into a single 100% college style uh, apartment. I think I passed a couple beer cans on my move in. <laughs> and uh, a week later, after spending three years in the hospital, I was walking to classes with a different pack on my back. During my junior year at the University of South Carolina, uh, I had just left a business meeting because I was pretending that I could do all of these different things. And uh, I was dressed pretty sharp, in my very humble opinion. <laughs> and uh, I passed two homeless gentlemen on the street on the walk to my car uh, going to class. And uh, one of them, clearly not knowing my history, shot me a finger pistol and said, hey, looking sharp, brother. I thanked him genuinely. Uh, I told him I appreciated the happiness in that moment uh, he had just shared with me. And I always try to be open and honest, but I will say that my next statement, um, I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed to say, uh, but it's a vital part of the story and that is, uh, I braced uh, for the question, the follow-up question after the compliment of asking me for money or something that he might need. And not a single other word was said. And every step I made closer to my car, I felt like I was getting pulled back 10. And I just thought, you know, what if you never see this genuinely you know, beautiful human and nice man again? And so I threw all of uh, my papers in the car, I shut the door and I went back to find what was about to become uh, my new friend, Kenny. And me and Kenny sat there and talked for 30 minutes or so before I had to head back to class like the good student I was, sir. <laughs> and uh, I sat with Kenny and, and it was an incredible moment. Kenny not only helped teach me that uh, whether your scars are from a tough life on the streets or a hand grenade in Afghanistan or putting it all on the line like our incredible uh, Afghan counterparts did to help us and to help their country. Uh, he helped teach me that no matter where our scars inside or out come from, uh, that struggle is the common thread throughout every single person on this earth. And so I wrapped my conversation up with Kenny and I just, I, I, you know, I wanted to do something and uh, I, I really didn't have any money. And so I asked him, hey, Kenny, you want to walk up the street to the College Mart and let me load you up on some snacks, whatever you want, some drinks? And uh, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I don't smoke, but can you get me a pack of cigarettes? I thought, OK, Kenny, you don't smoke. Why do you need a pack of cigarettes? And uh, his answer, I think about often, 
and um, I, it still chokes me up. Because just when you think you know what's going on, Kenny says to me, no, 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 I, I don't smoke, but cigarettes are like gold down at the shelter. I can sell each one for $2. I thought, man, not only am I glad I have sunglasses on right now, but uh, uh, you never know what people uh, around you are going through in life. Someone somewhere is having the worst day of their life, and all of us, big or small, and whether you want to admit it or not, every single day, face some kind of battle. Um, perspective is everything. Perspective is one of uh, the main reasons, but aside from my amazing medical team and my family who never left my side, my fellow Marines, and all of you that have crossed my path and helped me along the way, uh, perspective is the reason I can stand in front of you here tonight. Perspective allows us to look at that glass uh, half full, uh, but never forget what it was like when we could only see it half empty. My third and final story, and um, I guess um, lesson for the night, is impact. This next story I'll never be able to comprehend. Years ago, before I was a Medal of Honor recipient, um, I was a recovering wounded warrior, a, with some more time to heal up, uh, going to be a transitioning veteran. And uh, like, Chuck, the year the man, simplify, brother. Uh, as Chuck so powerfully put, um, I was just trying to figure it out. Trying to figure out not only who this new version of Kyle was, uh, trying to figure out this new um, banged up, torn apart, freshly healing, uh, body was able to do and what it could do and uh, I like so many of my wonderful Marine Corps mentors uh, General James Amos was the commandant at the time and he invited me um, to go to uh, I, I guess I would say his Marine Corps birthday ball, but really all of ours. But as Commandant, um, it was the one that he attended in Washington, D.C. And being right down the road from my three-year temporary home uh, and a chance to get out of the hospital, I happily and excitedly agreed. And um, I took off to a Marine Corps birthday ball that was much nicer uh, than the falling apart uh, melted, shot up cake uh, that was dropped to us in Afghanistan. Uh, and I got there and it was an amazing night and at the end of everything I was uh, in a meet and greet line and again I wasn't a Mel Von recipient but um, some people had started following the Facebook page that my mom uh, and parents had started. Uh, for mass updates, just to tell people, hey, Kyle's still alive, he's hanging on, just got out of a 13-hour surgery to fix his arm, so on and so forth. And a Marine approached me, whose rank and rack of ribbons uh, showed me that he had probably been in combat since I had been in diapers. And uh, like any good Lance Corporal, at the time, uh, I got nervous. I thought, uh, what did I do? But as he approached me, I could see that he uh, 
I mean, it, it seemed like he had tears in his eyes. I thought, oh man, I, I really messed up even worse than I thought. And as he got closer, again, the struggle that connects all of us, I could see that he was truly hurting, deeply hurting from what I didn't know. So I gave him a hug, I put my arm around him, I turned us away from the cameras, hopefully creating a more welcoming uh, presence or a place to talk. And he said, I didn't kill myself because of you. If you can get up out of the bed every day and put one step in front of the other, I can too. And uh, I share that story. Again, I'll never be able to comprehend it, but I share it uh, to say that I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea that people were tuning in to my story and my recovery and my journey. But unbeknownst to me, uh, they were. One of the uh, frustrating, but also very beautiful things about impact is that uh, a lot of the times uh, we don't see the full ripple effects from that impact. You throw a rock in a pond, they start out small. And then even though you can't see them, they continue to travel on and on, again, to where we don't know. So uh, I just want to thank you, all of you, as not only genuine uh, people, great Americans, but people who, by being here, by giving of your hard-earned money, your time, um, you give more than you take. And uh, I just, I couldn't think of a more perfect story or theme um, to tell here uh, to wrap things up tonight. Um, if not me, then who? Those are very powerful words. Imagine if everyone in the world said that every morning uh, when they woke up and got out of bed. So stay motivated. Uh, stay true to yourselves. Uh, and always remember that um, the beautiful thing about impact is uh, many times you never see those ripples. Uh, I'll leave you with this. Uh, appreciate the small and simple things. Uh, be kind and help others. Let the ones you love always know you love them. And when things get hard, or you get knocked down or blown up. Uh, trust that there is a plan and that you will be stronger for it. I'm Kyle Carpenter and you are worth it.